Hello, this is Canadian Independent Media. My name is Jack Etkin. It's September the 10th, this week, 9-11, vaccines, Site C, and more. We all know the official 9-11 story, but billions of people don't believe the official story, and there are many unanswered questions. For example, were the World Trade Center buildings brought down by airplanes, or were they brought down by controlled demolition? This is World Trade Center Building 7 on the day of 9-11. If the buildings were brought down by controlled demolition, then the entire official story is a lie. But whether we believe the official story or not, we all know what happened after 9-11. The destruction of Afghanistan, the destruction of Iraq, the destruction of Libya, and the destruction of Syria, all because of 9-11. And since 9-11, there has been never-ending war and fear and terror. Hundreds of thousands of innocent people have been murdered across the Middle East by the U.S. War of Terror. Millions of refugees have been created, including four million Syrian people now living in camps in Turkey and Lebanon. And with nowhere to go, people from the Middle East are fleeing to Europe, causing more turmoil, which may also be part of the plan. And because of 9-11, Canada now has Bill C-51, which threatens our basic rights. And of course, the National Police can spy on us all. All this, the wars, the death, the refugees, the removal of our rights, come from 9-11. But one of the most important questions has never been answered. Did the airplanes bring the buildings down? Because if planted explosives and controlled demolitions were used, then the whole official 9-11 story is a lie, and we desperately need an honest investigation of what actually happened. ...of explosions. Uh, here's one of the guys, you can tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, no. you, want call your, you want to call your mother or something? You heard explosions. Like, boom! We just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. Craig Bartmer was a policeman who was near Building 7 as it started to come down. It was nothing I would ever imagine seeing in my life. You know, the thing started peeling in on itself. and I mean, there was an umbrella of crap seven feet over my head that I just stared at. And somebody grabbed my shoulder and I started running and the shit's hitting the ground behind me. And uh, the whole time you're hearing thum, 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 thum. So, I, I think I know an explosion when I hear it. Radio transmissions from September 11th, firefighters reported numerous additional explosions going off within the buildings. See, I got uh, an eyewitness who said there was an explosion on floor 7 to 8. 7 8. <laughs> Why won't Canada's corporate media ask any of these questions? Why can't there be an honest investigation of 9-11? What really is the truth? The media always tells us that vaccines are safe and effective, and lots of people believe them. Here's a Globe and Mail editorial from 2015 telling us that people who don't believe the official vaccine story are a threat to society. And here is the official policy of the government of British Columbia. But here is something the media chooses not to tell us. Merck is one of the biggest drug companies in the world and they make the number one MMR vaccine, that is measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines, that we're told all children should get. Merck is being sued by two of its own scientists who say that Merck faked the research on how effective the vaccine is. And as for the safety of vaccines, there are two sides to the vaccine safety story as well. Our leaders tell us vaccines are safe. They also tell us GMOs are safe, which is a lie. 
And of course, they told us for decades that nuclear power is completely safe. That too was a lie. What Canada needs is an honest discussion about the safety and effectiveness of vaccines. And we need a discussion not controlled by the corporations and their media and their politicians. We should be able to look at the honest numbers and facts and the evidence, and then we can make intelligent decisions about how to move ahead. But we don't get that. Instead, the corporate-owned media gives us this. We seem to have a lot of problems in Canada these days. But all these problems may have a similar cause. The real problem is that our governments and our media are largely controlled by corporate Canada, and especially the secretive Business Council of Canada. Take healthcare. We used to have one of the best systems in the world. Today, Canada's healthcare system is very profitable, but it isn't working for a lot of people. It's the same with house prices and rents. While the private sector makes fortunes, we pay high, record high prices and record high rents. And this is not by accident. This is the plan, and this is what they have decided to do to us. Why should a corporation sell us a condo for $100,000 when they can sell us the same thing for $300,000? Corporate Canada is very smart. They know that in order to run things, they had to own all the big media, which they do, and they had to control all the top politicians, which they also do. And that's how they run our country. If we want to fix things up in Canada, we have to deal with the reality of corporate power. We have to understand that the corporations have taken over our governments. We Canadians cannot fix our problems until we control our governments. Democracy is important. It will make a big difference in our lives, and we definitely need more of it. A letter signed by over 200 scientists and scholars questions the entire Site C project. And this is what the letter basically says. Based on evidence, the undersigned scholars have concluded that the Site C process did not accord with the promises of both the provincial and federal governments to reconciliation with and legal obligations to First Nations. The Site C process did not accord with the government's promise of protection of the environment, and the Site C process did not live up to the commitment to evidence-based decision-making with scientific integrity. The people who signed this letters would like both governments to explain why the unprecedented amount of adverse environmental effects are justified by a project whose electricity output is presently unnecessary and for which less expensive and less environmentally damaged alternatives exist. The letter continues. The environmental damage arising from Site C is greater than for any project ever assessed under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act. Site C is an example of how totally corrupt our political system has become, and the media is worse. If we want to start to win on Site C and everything else, we've got to ask if we still have a democracy in Canada. So that's it for this week from Canadian Independent Media. My name is Ed Johnson, and thanks for watching.